we're going to be learning a bunch of cool Photoshop tricks and tools to create these really awesome post custom blur effects to give your photos a little bit more style, action, and dramatic tones. We're going to be starting with the easiest to hardest effects, so let's get to it. For the first one, we're going to do the zoom effect. So we're going to open up Photoshop. We have this really cool photography of this dude on this landscape scene. What we're going to do first is duplicate this image and then drag that image into that plus button. We're going to type in original on the bottom and then on the top, we're going to type exposure. For the exposure, we're going to click on that, go to filter on the top. All the way on the bottom, there's going to be a thing called radial blur. And as you can see, there's two different options for radial blur. There's spin and then there's zoom. We're going to click on zoom. And as you can see on that white square box, we could drag around this focal point to kind of control where that zoom goes. So I'll just show you what it looks like if we just drag it on the top right corner and how that effect applies to that particular area. So we're going to press on OK. And as you can see, it applied this really cool zooming into that cloud area on the top corner. But what we want to do is zoom in and make that guy our focal point. We're going to hit Command Z to undo. And then what we're going to do is go back on the top, click on filter, blur, and then radial blur again. And then we're going to drag that focal point towards the middle. And you could play with the amount on the top scrub bar. What we're going to do is drag to 30. 50 might be a little too much. And we're going to press OK. It did this really cool blur that actually adds a lot to this image in general. For example, if you want to make it look more cinematic or you want to give a storytelling element to it. So after we have this done, we can see that the guy's face is not that clear. For example, if this was a music album and we want the artist to be well known and have that face very clear. So what we want to do is hit that exposure layer and then we're going to click on that mask button on the bottom. It's going to give you this box. What we want to do is hit that paintbrush. Make sure that the paintbrush color is black. And as you can see, we can start painting away the effect so it becomes more clear. So we could go back into the particular face area and bring that up so the artist's face could be more pronounced and we could see it more clearly. And a really cool trick for this mask tool is if you click on that backslash under the delete button, you can see this red area and this red area indicates where the particular mask is applied. So it's really easy to toggle between mask and no mask. And that's the zoom effect. Here's the before and after. And you can see it adds a lot to this image in a really fun and cinematic way. So try this one out really fast and easy. The next one is called the radial blur. This one's gonna be more of a spiral. We have this image open. What we're gonna do is duplicate the image, label the bottom one original, the top one exposure, and make the exposure into a smart object. What we're gonna do is toggle on the filter, click on blur, and then hit radial blur again. And we have it already set to zoom, but what we wanna do is click spin. So the graph changed and it's more of a circular pattern. What we could do is toggle on that slider. And again, we could drag that focal point center area if we want it on a top top right, the bottom right. We're going to leave it in the center and let me show you what it looks like when it's 60 amount. So we're going to click on OK. And as you can see, it did this really crazy spiral effect and it's definitely too much. What we're going to do is click Command Z to undo and the outer individual, we want her to be more pronounced too. And right now it's really distorting the face. So we're going to go back. We're going to do it around nine and nine is feeling really good. I kind of like the distortion on that outer figure's face and we can see that centered artist figure really nicely. We're going to hit is the mask tool again to bring some more details back into the figure. Start painting away some of that distortion so that centered image is more clear and we can focus on both figures. And there you have it. This is the before and after. Really like this radial blur effect as well and super easy similar to the zoom effect. Next one what we have is the super abstract blur aka Gaussian blur. This one is super easy to do and one of my personal favorites. We have this really cool portrait photography. What we're going to do is click on that photo. Make sure it's to convert it as a smart object so it's easy to change up what we're gonna do is click on filter blur and click on Gaussian blur and as you can see it already applied this really abstract blur effect and as we scrub through the bar you can see that it just slowly starts to blur more and more up until it becomes one solid color and this is a really cool trick that I use to create really nice abstract gradient blurs for example instead of having to manually create it you can use the existing image that you like the colors already and it could create these really cool abstract shapes. For example, if we make the radius around 120, it almost becomes this really cool kind of colored shape with all of these nice blues, grays, and warmer colors in the center. Around 40, the silhouette of the individual comes, which is really nice too. And as we go more towards the 28 area, that image of the character and her face detail starts to come in more. And also, this is a nice way if you have a low res image to apply this effect and make it more blurry and larger. 
so you could create a more purposeful composition. We have another image and I want to show you what this blur effect looks like on different types of colors. So this one is a black and white one. Let's go to filter, blur, and hit on Gaussian blur. The side profile is really nice and the blur has this really nice effect to it. And as we up that Gaussian blur, it almost creates an abstract shape. Kind of doesn't even look like a human anymore. It looks like, like it could be an animal or some kind of fairy tale creature. Lastly, we have this really cool color composition and I just want to show you what this looks like when we apply the Gaussian blur. So as you can see, as we scroll up really far to the right, it almost becomes this nice abstract shape that you could use and get inspiration from. I really dig the colors on this. Really love that pop of orange on the bottom left and that nice in-between color in the middle and that light blue on the top right hand corner. So a really quick way to create more abstract composition, shapes, and color grading. Next up is the motion blur. Super easy and simple to do. We have this image of a surfer catching this wave. What we want to do is give some movement and variety to the overall image itself. What we're going to do is duplicate this image. We're going to label the bottom one original and the top one exposure. Let's hit that exposure image on the top. Let's go to filter, blur, and go to motion blur. So after we hit this motion blur, it's going to give us a preview and a toggle of the distance. As we scroll up, you can see the actual image itself change and it had that effect of light. Right now, we had the distance around 29. Let's kind of drag it to around 32 and that's feeling really good and it really adds this nice movement and action shot to this overall photo. I also really like to add some noise to this blur because sometimes it gets too soft and it feels a little fake so what we're gonna do is click on filter noise and add noise and it's gonna give us this panel and I always prefer to make it more subtle let's make the amount around three so it feels more realistic you can't really tell the difference but it does add a little bit more of a grain and it kind of has like a film photography look to it but trick that we could do if you want that individual sports character to be clear but you want all of the background to be blurry and have that nice motion blur is we're gonna click on that mask tool on that bottom area click on that paintbrush and make sure that the brush is a black color so it's gonna be able to use that mask effect and start painting the figure just around the surfboard and the overall shape and as you can see by using the subtle motion blur everything else except for the character looks like it's fast it's moving in quick space and this character is frozen in time so another really cool and quick and easy motion blur effect next up what we have is the crazy face and it's a really popular long exposure effect you see someone's face go back and forth and it looks like there's a lot of motion to it what we're gonna do is duplicate this image three times so we're gonna drag it to that plus button we're gonna label that bottom one main that middle one left and that top one right and what we're gonna do is click on left and up on top we're gonna toggle to filter blur and we're gonna do motion blur and then we're gonna play around with the distance and already there's this really nice movement applied to this individual's face what we're gonna do is toggle between that and slowly drag it to to the left area and we're gonna lower the opacity to around 50 so then you can see that back main layer where the individual is stable and locked in that place what we're gonna do is lower the opacity to around 50 percent so then we can see the back layer of the main image something that i always love trying to do is if you toggle up next to the opacity we have normal you could drag through these particular effects option and really quickly you can see how each image toggles and sometimes you might have an, a magical effect that you really dig and going back we're gonna click on the right image go to filter apply that motion blur effect again we're gonna make this distance a little more subtle and drag her to the right lower the opacity to around like 20 percent so then you can see both the right left and main image together all in one composition and we're gonna just paint away that white edge area so it feels more blend in with the overall composition and after that we're finished this is the crazy face long exposure effect next up what we have is is background object blur what we have is this nice photography by joe greer really nice and beautiful composition we have this individual looking at these flying birds and we could get inspiration from the references for this blur effect and have these particular birds be flying around and having that long exposure movement to them so what we're going to do is get our magic wand tool let's click on that and let's make the tolerance 80 because these birds are pretty high contrast against the background so it's going to highlight and pick up well click on shift and and as we hold on shift, you can see that the wand icon has this plus button next to it. And this means that you could click on other birds and make them all into one selection, which, which makes our life easier when we're applying this effect. So let's highlight all of these birds. Once we have them all highlighted, hit command copy and then command V paste. And as you can see, it's going to create a separate layer 
for these birds. We're gonna duplicate this layer, title this layer Exposure Blur 1, and we're gonna make two more layers. So there's three in total, Exposure 1, Exposure 2, and Exposure 3. Similar to the crazy face, we're gonna do Exposure 3 first. We're gonna go to Filter, Blur, and now let's click on Motion Blur. It already adds this nice movement to these birds flying. We're gonna do the same thing for Exposure 2, do the Motion Blur, and then also same for Exposure 1 with the Motion Blur. Let's hit on Exposure 1 and make sure that it's a smart object so we can easily edit each blur effect. And then after we have all of the motion blurs applied, let's go back and start clicking on the filter so we can start playing around with particular motion blurs that we like. And we can make some of the distance more subtle and some of them more extreme so it has a nice balance to it. After we have that done, as you zoom in, what's weird about motion blurs, it will give you these line streaks which might not look as natural as we want. So we could go back in for each exposure, we can make it softer and more natural. So we could go to filter, blur, and we hit Gaussian blur. And Gaussian blur would make it have a softer overall texture to it. So we're gonna do that for exposure two and exposure one as well. And as we zoom in, we can see that the original image has this noise effect to it. And our effect that we applied has this really clear and crisp blur to it, which doesn't really match. So what we could do is go to filter noise and add noise for all of the exposure. So it can match more well with the background. As we zoom in again, we can see that it kind of blends in much more better and it feels more natural in place. And that's feeling really good. And there you have it. We have this movement for these birds. Here's a before and after. It really gives these birds this feeling of movement and making them feel much more alive. So that's the object background blur effect. Last up, I call it soul leaving the body. It's this mixture of exposure effect and this warp effect. Let me show you how to do this. So what we're going to do is duplicate this image and let's title it exposure up on top. Let's click on that exposure layer, click on filter, blur, and click on that motion blur. So it applies this movement and this nice long exposure blur to it. What we're gonna do is lower the opacity to around 50 to 60%. Let's shift that exposure blur layer a little more to the left area. And let's make the smudge tools radius super large. And what we're gonna do is start smudging the face and moving it to the top left corner. So it feels like his face is almost protruding outside and his spirit in is leaving outside of his body and it's like this really nice and kind of ghetto hack and it could look a little creepy at first with like his eyes kind of widening and the mouth and nose shadows so the smudge tool can take a little time and it could be a little laggy but just be patient with it and kind of give it time and movement after we have that feeling good and you shaped it to how you like it we're gonna click on the exposure layer and then click on mask let's grab the paintbrush make sure that paint is black and what we're gonna do is start painting away some of the exposure layer that's on top of his face so it looks like it's coming out of his side and front face but his face is still visible and afterwards we can apply another Gaussian blur effect to make the exposure layer feel more subtle and more blended to the background so we're gonna go to filter blur and then hit Gaussian blur and it made it a little more simple and feels more ghostly so that's the spirit leaving the body effect I call it and it's kind of like a mixture between all of the different effects that we use feel free to have fun with this so those are some quick tricks and effects to create these really awesome blur effects on Photoshop. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you liked it, please leave a like. If you want to see more videos like these, please subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. Thanks again always for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.